What is going on guys? It is Patrick here and today I'm bringing you guys my ultimate guide to the new Black Ops 3 Zombies map, Der Eisendrache. Now what this video is designed to be is a complete reference guide for this Zombies map. So how it's going to work is we're going to start with a complete walkthrough of the map, show you guys where everything is, and then from there look at the buildables, and lastly we're going to focus on the bows and upgrading all four of them. That's going to be the main focus of this video. So guys, if you could please leave a like as well, feel free to to subscribe if you're new to the channel that would all be great but let's get into it all right so you're gonna spawn in in this gondola area which is basically like a two leveled spawn now it's basically like every other spawn you've ever been in we've got an rk5 on the wall right here and quick revive is located right there however in my game it happened to be gone because i was playing solo now moving down to the bottom level we've got a gobble gum which is kind of cool that they included that in the spawn as well as a shiva so very basic now there's two other things in this map which are kind of cool we've got a landing pad which i'll talk about a little bit later and we've also got the tram now how the tram works is there's these fuse pieces that you'll get from zombies when you kill them you basically pick it up like a normal drop and what you have to do is put it into that machine and it will give you a free drop located inside the gondola now there are two exits the first one is right here they both lead to power um, but one is better than the other so that's the first one that's the high road but we're going to take the low road because this is going to get us to the dragon area so i recommend going this way first so in this next area there's not really a lot we've got a krm on the wall kind of cool graphics and stuff going on here but basically you're just going to want to head through this area we've also got double tap and that gate right there which is basically like a slam thing and last but not least we have Gobblegum. Now, heading into this area, this is a very important part. I call this the lower courtyard. So, immediately we've got a box location there as well as a dragon head on the wall. I'll be talking about the dragons later and what they do. So, if we go up these stairs right here, we're going to get a gobblegum and a wonder fizz. Now, this area is very interconnected, as is the entire map, and you guys will start to learn this as we go through it. We've got another lander pad there, and then, again, that staircase just kind of leads back down to the lower courtyard. Now, going into this room right here, we've got an Elkar 9 on the wall, and we've also got a buildable station. Kind of a random one, you're probably not going to be using it a lot, as well as a launch pad, which, again, that connects to the landing pads. I'll talk about that a little bit later there's another door that goes down to there we're not going to go there just quite yet as again everything connects to each other we'll explain that in a second we've got the vmp on the wall and then the bedrooms so this is a very weird part of the map there's a wonder fizz there yeah it's kind of confusing at start but it's honestly just a big kind of circle area very very dangerous very close quarters now there's a kn on the wall i recommend buying the kn it's a great gun um but honestly this is just kind of a wave pass through you don't need to stay here don't really there's not a lot going on other than easter egg stuff now we've got the hvk on the wall here and there's a door which goes this way to the console room again we'll cover that in a sec and we've got the gobble gums but we're heading to power so stamina up is in the power room and then of course the key to success We've got the power right there. Now, this area is kind of cool, um, but again, it's just another one of those like little things. The Bowie knife is there for 3,000, so we can go that way to the console room or head out to the Bastion. This is the Bastion. So, at the Bastion, we have one of the Pack-a-Punch locations, um, and we've also got a Death Ray, which is a very cool trap, great for killing the Panzer, and another launch pad. Now, one thing to note is with Pack-a-Punch, basically, there's three locations on the map and what you have to do is like just go up to it and you teleport the pieces to another location. And once you do that for two places, the third one will all kind of go together. So as you guys can see, this place kind of relates back again from the Bastion, goes back to the lower courtyard. Everything is related in this map. They did a really good job with this. Now, moving towards the right of the Bastion, we have the Clock Tower. So, at this area, we've got a Wonder Fizz as well as another landing pad. Now, as you've seen, these all throughout the map. Basically, what they do is you have to initialize them, and then you can go into these machines, as you'll see in the top right corner. And it's basically just a transportation method around the map. There's a few of them. Now, heading into the Clock Tower, this is a very insignificant area other than Easter egg stuff. Um, kind of significant, kind of cool, but not of major importance. However, if we head down to the bottom we're going to find ourselves in the 
main courtyard. And this is one of the most important areas of the map as it's just very central. It's got a lot going on. Again, there's another landing uh, launch pad, which goes to the landing pad over to the lower courtyard. Um, we've got a CUDA on the wall located right there. And then we've also got a mystery box location to our right here. Now this area leads um, to a lot of locations. Again, it's just like everything just kind of relates to each other. So an electric trap right there. And the, here we are in the console room. So there's another dragon head on the wall. I'll point that out in a sec. We've got speed cola, major key. Um, there is the dragon head right there. And then we've also got an M887 on the wall. Now, this area is going to connect us up and back into the power room. So remember that area I was saying? We'll get that to that in a second. Well, here we are. See how it relates? It's it's very, very complex at first. And then you realize, wow, this is just like great for moving around the map because everything is next to each other. So as you can see there, um, that's this area. Now, if we go to the left set of stairs, we have a Wonder Fizz machine as well. This is going to take us back towards the clock tower and courtyard. So we have this kind of top area with a gobble gum machine. Again, not a ton of stuff. Stuff going here you won't find yourself in this area too much in the game there's the clock tower and then we can take these stairs down into the courtyard again so heading into the courtyard um, there's one kind of last central area of the map that we can go and to get here you have to take the console room so this is a kind of significant area, but mostly just for the bow, which we'll cover later. However, this is what we're looking for. So this is the anti-gravity room, the chamber. Um, to turn anti-gravity on, you basically have to step on these four panels and wait until they're glowing blue. It takes about five seconds for each one. And then you get this mo brief moments of anti-gravity, which will help you find the shield piece. Again, we'll go over that later. Now, this area kind of diverts to three to four different places depending how you want to look at it. First, as you see, it just kind of loops around. First, we have a teleporter. Next up, we have a place that goes to the lower courtyard, that door here. And to the right, we're going to go actually go back towards spawn. So, finally, we have Juggernog. This is Jug's location. You have to turn the power on to get to it. Um, but look, we're back to spawn. It's crazy. I know. It, how it just all loops together. Very, very complex. But there you go. Now, as you can see here, we've got this door, remember, that I was talking about that, hey, where does this one go? Well, we've got the LKR9, we have Mule Kick to our left there, we've got, uh, I think, a KRM up on the wall here as well as Gobblegum, but if we see here, this location is going to head back up to the courtyard once again. Anyways, heading back down to the chamber, there's the spawn. This room was as we were just looking at. I just want to show this again to you guys because, again, it all relates to each other. This was another door that we saw previously. This heads to the lower courtyard. See? Again, it's crazy. Back to here again, we've got a second Pack-a-Punch place. You're going to have to teleport that. And then last but not least, we've got a little sort of launch pad, which is going to send you back up to the um, uh, courtyard again, the main courtyard. Now... Heading to the teleporter, as this is the last area of the map. Guys, it's crazy, it's complex, but again, it's going to make sense once you start to work it out. So, we can teleport here for 500 points, and this is going to take us to the rocket pad, which is very crucial for upgrading the bows, as well as getting a piece for one of the buildables. So, here we've got another launch pad right there. Um, that heads from the Bastion. We've got the VMP there, and that big kind of rocket thing that's probably really important. Um, we've also got a Wonder Fizz machine here, as well as another launch Launch pad, you can see that's going to send you up and into the spawn. Now, over here, there's going to be actually two steps that you can get on top of here. Guys, it's the final piece for Pack-A-Punch. Boom, there it is for 5,000 points as always. Pack-A-Punch camo is um, rainbow this time. Just fun little fact for you. But anyways, guys, that is the entire map. All right, guys, next we're going to take a look at the buildables and then finally finish up this video with the bow and its four upgrades. First off, though, let's look at the shield. So the shield has three parts. One spawns in the lower courtyard, one spawns in the upper courtyard, and one spawns in the anti-gravity room. And to make things a little bit more complex, each part has three different spawn locations. The first one being in the lower courtyard is the tank. Now this can spawn right there and that location up by these boxes right here in that location right there. And then the last location is sort of up towards the top, kind of heading towards the Bastion and it's going to be in this location 
right here. Now the next piece is located in the main courtyard. This is sort of like the face front for it. The first part is Option XB is right there. Um, the second one is actually very close to it. It's just located in that right across the area right there. And then the last one is located up in the bell tower. So you're going to have to run up here. And it's just located to the left of that sitting zombie or dead zombie, whatever. Now the last one's a little bit more complex. You're going to have to go to the main chamber and sit down on these four um, sort of panels and wait for them to go blue. And then you'll turn on anti-gravity. Now, to do this, you, again, you just have to stand on them and then you're going to have to wall run to pick up this third part so as you're gonna see here I find one of the locations and basically what I do is I simply just kind of hop up it's the same sort of mechanic as multiplayer and pick up the piece again this has two other locations the first one is gonna be you're gonna want to run towards the other end of the map and it's gonna be located right there on that sort of eye look looking thing and then the other one is going to be just not far from it right across there in that location right there so those are the three pieces once you get it you can take it to any workbench and build it. I highly recommend using the shield as it gives you extra defense. It's just a very good thing to use. Now let's move on to the Ragnarok. So the Ragnarok is a combination of both gravity spikes and an electric propulsion trap. It works the same way as the sword as you have to charge it up for you to be able to use it. And there are three pieces to it. The first can be acquired from killing the Panzer. Very straightforward. It's just like an Origins when you kill him and he drops the piece. The second one is located in the rocket place. Basically just wait for a test cycle to go off everything's going to start going crazy and head to the back of the map and hit this switch you can only hit it as the trap is going off and then go back into this room now by the teleporter there's going to be a little control panel and there's going to be flashing lights wait for these lights to flash green it's going to be a little bit difficult as you have to try to survive but basically eventually all three will turn green and just go up to it hit activate console and your piece or second piece, I should say, will be located in the teleporter. As for the third one, what you want to do is go to the Bastion and turn on the Death Ray. This is just going to kind of cycle through, and once it is, there's going to be a sort of part floating in the air. Now, to get this piece, you have to line up your launch pad shot with it. So in my game, it's located through this one. So essentially, just activate it, and you'll pick it up as such. Now again, just go to whatever location you want to build it, and that will be your Ragnarok. Again, something you definitely want to build. Awesome, awesome thing. Super clutch, and uh, that's the second buildable. Alright guys, so now I'm going to show you how to build the bow or the Wrath of the Ancients and then upgrade it into its four different forms. If you haven't left a like yet, please feel free. So the normal bow is quite easy to build. Basically, there are three dragons located around the map and you have to feed it like you do in Mob of the Dead. So the dragon needs eight zombies killed in front of it for it to be fed. The first one is located at the lower courtyard. The second is in the console room, as you can see right here. Also, just ignore my face. This is just gameplay from a stream. And then the last one is going to be located down by the pyramid in the anti-gravity room or the chamber. So after you've done all three, basically once you feed it, it just kind of crumbles like that. Head up the stairs towards the night, and you're going to find your bow named the Wrath of the Ancients. All right, guys, so now it is time to start looking at the upgrade processes for this bow. So there are four in total. We have the wolf bow, the electric bow, the void or skull crusher, and lastly, the fire bow. So this is gonna be very complicated. Anyways, let's get into it. All right, guys, so now we're going to look at the wolf bow. So basically, for this first step to beginning the trial, what you have to do is find four picture frames located around the map and hit the pictures in the order that tells a story. However, the pictures are going to be in a different order every time. So the pictures are located in the clock tower, the mine just by mule kick, the console room up top on the floor, and in the museum sort of area. And basically the order that you have to hit it in is like I said, telling a story. So the first one you have to hit is the one where it's gonna be a picture of a king and his wolves. The second one is going to be the king riding off to war. The third one is gonna be the picture of Der Eisendrak, a castle located with sort of like this tentacle monster around it. And then the last one is the king getting killed. So simply hit square on all those pictures and then you're gonna wanna head down to the anti-gravity room and you'll notice the wall breaks, pick up this arrow and we can move on to the next step. 
Now head to the rocket launch and go and look for this red flag up on the mountain. You're going to want to hit it with your bow and you're going to notice that a skull is going to drop down and this is actually the skull of a dog, the master's dog. So take it to the little spot right here and just kind of hold square, fiddle around with it and a dog is actually going to spawn into the map. Now you're going to want to actually follow him around and he's going to take you to three different areas and he's actually digging for his master's remains. So basically what you want to do is just get kills around him. He's going to actually, I think, believe need six kills. And once you get that, basically what's going to happen is um, it's going to, he's going to like do this little thing. You can go up to it, press square, and he'll take you to the next area. So the three locations are always the same. It's in that main courtyard by double tap. And the last area is just beside Pack-a-Punch in the chamber. So from here, what you want to do is you're going to notice he's going to go and start looking at this wall. And and that's where his master's sort of casket is. So you're going to have to wall run. And this has been notoriously difficult for people. And shoot your bow into that little hole and hit an urn. So I recommend hitting it from the left. And basically, you just want to fly in there um, and get it. But once you do it, actually, this little panel is going to pop down. You can put the pieces in. And this guy is going to kind of spawn, do a little thing, and he's going to give you the reborn arrow. So lastly, take it to this place by the pyramid again and just get 20 kills, I believe it is, and you're going to have your reborn arrow. So all you have to do is just put it in after you've got the 20 kills. And uh, there you go. That is the wolf bow. All right, guys, so now we're going to move on to the fire bow. And this is probably, I would say, the second best bow in this game. So the first step you have to do is head to the top of the clock tower, shoot that little symbol, and it will reveal the broken arrow, which you can pick up. Now, from here, you're going to want to head to the rocket and wait for a test sequence to finish. Now, immediately once the door opens, you have to run out and shoot this glowing thing with your bow. When you do it successfully, you'll see a sort of fiery thing head up to the castle. Now here's where it gets difficult. There are three circles located around the map that you have to hit as you're teleporting through the air. So the first one is located just by the death ray to the left of the corner, kind of below the steps. The second one is located at the double tap area, sort of just below that window, kind of on the ground. And then the last one is located just by the wonder fizz, kind of to the left of the death ray area by the clock tower. So again, what you have to do, and this is, you gotta be a sniper, man. You gotta fly through the air and hit them as you go. So that first one, you go from the lower courtyard across and hit it just as you land. The second one, as you're gonna see here that I already showed you guys, you have to fly through the air and hit it just by the death ray. And basically, the only time you can hit this is when you're in the air. So you're gonna see, if you miss it, you're not gonna get anything. However, when you do hit it, it will actually stay lit up, as you're gonna see right there. Now for the last one. This one's kind of hard. So as you can see, double tap right there. You have to hit it in that exact area. However, it's just so quick and so uh, precise. That this one's probably going to take you a little bit. So next up, you have to stand directly in all three circles and basically just get five to ten kills. The circles will stop being lit once you've got enough kills. And once you've done all three, you're going to have to note that one will go back to being lit up again. Take note of that. So from here, what you're going to want to do is head to the clock tower again and go up to the clock at, up at the top and hit square. Now this is going to give you an apothecant symbol that you're going to also have to remember. So there are three fireplaces located around the map. One is below the dragon head in the console room. There's another directly to your right as soon as you walk into the bedrooms um, coming from the lower courtyard. And the third one is located just between the gobble gum and the wonder fizz also located in the lower courtyard. Now each fireplace has an apothecan symbol located inside of it. So match the one on the clock to the fireplace and go back to the circle that is still lit up. Now if you get some kills around it, there's going to be a fire sort of volcano thing that spawns up around it. And what you have to do is you get three shots or three chances and basically with your bow, when you shoot it and it hits the ground, it will move the fire sort of rock to where it lands. So you get three chances and you basically have to shoot it and then it'll travel to another area, stand where it lands in that fire volcano, and then basically you have to get it to the determined fireplace.
Now hold square on the fireplace, it's gonna do a little thing, and then you're gonna get a symbol that you've done the next step. So from here, head back to the Bastion, you're gonna notice that the big sun that was up in the air is down, hold square to it, it's going to explode, and then it's going to give you the reborn arrow. So for here, just take it down to the little area. It's going to take 20 kills again that you have to fill it up. Put your bow in and it will give you the upgraded fire bow. Next up, we're going to move on to the Skull Crusher or the Void Bow. And basically what this does is when you shoot it, it sends out a whole bunch of little skulls and attacks all the zombies. It's very cool. Now let's get into the process. So first step, you have to go to Double Tap area, look above the wall, and basically shoot that. It's going to drop down your Broken Arrow. Next, you're going to want to make your way over to just above the mines where Mule Kick is or uh, here. And basically, you're going to have to melee kill a zombie over that purple glowing tile. It's going to break the tile and you press square up against that urn. It's going to release it and send it up in the air. The next step that we have to do is go around the map and find six keeper skulls and press square on them. So the first one is going to be located on that windowsill up top there. The next one is going to be in Samantha's room in the toy chest, as you can see. The next one is going to be at double tap. So turn around this corner and it's going to be located on that brick. From here, you're going to want to head to the mine shaft right by Mule Kick and you're going to be find it right behind a wall next one is going to be located at the teleporter just in that sink and the last one is at the rocket place just behind the truck in the bed right there now go back to the urn and you're going to notice that there's this big like panel on the floor with all these skulls floating around it so bring six crawlers to this area it'll sacrifice them and give them to the urn now once you've done this the urn is going to say three words listen very very carefully and remember them if you screw this part up you have to restart. So from this point on, what you want to do is go around and kill a whole bunch of zombies and they're going to drop these little panels. Now, once you've got six of them, note that they're all down on this area. Remember your three words. So let's say you got Griffin Crown Horn. So what you want to do is go to the area with the knights and note the pictures below them. So in this example, I have a griffin. So I go up to it and I see that I have this sort of whatever symbol this is. This is the first symbol that I have to input down at that circle thing with the urn. So do this with the next two steps as well. So crown and horn, and then go back to this area and input them in order. So then we do crown here. And then the last one that we're going to do is horn that I see right there. And boom. Now, once you've done all three, it's going to do this little sort of cutscene, give you the reborn arrow. And then from there, you're going to be able to take it down into this area, insert it, get your 20 kills and then you can get your skull crusher bow all right guys now we're going to move on to the fourth and final bow and my personal favorite the electric bow so what this does is when you charge it it sends out this crazy storm kind of like the ice staff from origins and basically just kind of kills all the zombies in the area anyways let's move into this step so the first thing that you have to do is go to the bastion and shoot the little weather tower thing up on the little peak and what this is going to do is drop down the broken arrow that you have to pick up now from here, there's three sort of wooden sort of stacks of logs that you have to shoot on top of towers. And basically what happens is once you hit it, it's going to set them on fire. So the first one you're going to see is located just outside the clock tower to the right here. The next one is located sort of to the left, and this is a very difficult one to hit. And then the last one is going to be located down at... <clears throat> down at the rocket station. So next head back to the chamber and start wall running once there's anti-gravity and there's gonna be a bunch of panels that you have to hit. So the first one is going to be located right there and they're gonna turn blue once you run over them. And as you see, they're glowing. The next one is that thing right there. The next one is gonna be coming around the corner just right there. As you can see, that one's already lit up. Um, it's kind of hard when you're playing on a connection because it's just sort of glitchy. Um, that one's the next one and then the last one again is located right there so run over all five of them without falling off the panel they'll all start glowing but once you run over them they'll be completely lit up then you'll be good to go to the next step now there's going to be three sort of electrical pots around the map that you have to fill up with zombie souls so basically just kill them right beside it it'll fill up you need to get six kills per pot these pots are located just above the courtyard in this sort of wooden type area with the barrels the next one is just by the clock tower and the last one is down inside the rocket station area. 
Now, once you fill up these pots, what you have to do is take your bow and fully charge it back all the way next to the pot, and it's going to give it this electrical charge. Now, remember those things that we set on fire? What we have to do is shoot them with the electrical charge bow, and it's going to make like a fire and electricity storm around them. So do that for all three locations to their respective pots, and then we can move on to the next step. Now the last thing that you have to do is go back to the little weather thing and basically shoot it. It'll be all stormy and crazy and then what you have to do is go down below to it and there's going to be like this blue electric thing. So hold square onto it and this cloud is going to go up into the weather thing as you see there. It'll drop your reborn arrow and then you can pick that up, take it down to the chamber, put it on its pedestal, get 20 kills in front of it, sacrifice the 20 zombies, then put your bow into it, pick up your reborn bow, which is the electric bow, my personal favorite. But anyways, guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Um, but guys, that's it. This was honestly the most time I've ever put into a video. I think it was over 12 hours all said and done with gameplay and everything. So guys, really hope you enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun to make. And uh, that's all I got for you guys. So have a great day. My name is Seth Plays and I will see you later. Peace.